What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. I'm loving Kim Delaney as Jackie Templeton. I'm loving it. She came in and she totally exceeded my expectations as I thought she would. I knew she would. Like, I've been a big fan of Kim Delaney for so long. And like I told y'all, I remember back in the day, I know some of y'all remember her from like all my children and stuff, but I go back with her from NYPD Blue Days when she played Detective Diane Russell. Um, She was amazing on that show. Definitely was. Like, I remember her whole romance with... Uh, Bobby Simone, Detective Bobby Simone, when they both were in the 15th precinct together at, on NYPD Blue, um, Jim, played by Jimmy Smits. Man, that's how far back I go with her. Um, and then, of course, she was on Army Wives and stuff. I still was pissed when they killed off her character on Army Wives. Um, so, yeah, Kim Delaney, man, she she's a gem. You know, she really is. She's such a diamond um, in the acting business. Um so to see her portray Jackie Templeton was amazing. And when she was sitting there talking to Lulu and they were talking, cause you know, Jackie Templeton used to date Robert Scorpio. She used to date, um, Luke and, uh, she was friends with Blackie Parrish and Tiffany and, you know, so that's how far back that character goes. Um, and of course, you know, when Lulu was bringing up Luke, Jackie did not want to talk about Luke. She was like, nope, let the past be the past. I'd rather keep it there. I know that's right. <laughs> Ain't no need to look back. Because obviously her and Luke, mm, she don't want to remember those days. Um, I loved how Jackie basically checked Lulu. Because the whole time they were talking, my thing is Lulu should have took out a pen and a pad. Because, Lulu, you should have been taking notes because you're trying to be a reporter. Jackie Templeton um, is the best reporter. Let's just put it like that. You know what I mean? Like, she's the best. So, you might want to take notes from the best if you want to be a serious reporter. Because Jackie looked over the files. You know what I mean? She read over the files that Lulu sent her on Cyrus Renault. And she let Lulu know real quick. She was like, okay, all of this is... You know, circumstantial. All of this is basically just, um, basically, it's all theories. She was like, everything that you sent me about Cyrus are all theories because there's no real evidence to support anything that you're telling me about him. She was like, it just looks like a philanthropist who's trying to do good by the the hospital that everybody loves. And she was like, well, the hospital's a front for a bigger play. That's fine. That's your theory, though. That's what you think, you know, because she talking about, well, I got a gut instinct and all that. I mean, granted, Luke, you know, back in the day, of course, Luke was always known for his gut theory on occasion. So Lulu thinks that she has it. I'm like, we all know Cyrus is dirty, but it's not about what you know. It's about what you can prove. And that's really what makes the case. You know what I mean? Jackie, yeah, she took down some senators. She took down some very influential people who were doing dirt. But you want to know how Jackie did that? By doing her homework. She investigated. That's what a real investigative journalist does. They investigate. You don't sit there and go off of theories, circumstantial. You don't, you don't go over all of that. You know what I mean? Like You have to present the facts. That's all the public cares about. The facts. What can you prove? And that's why I'm glad Jackie's sticking around poor Charles because she's going to help Lulu with this. And Lulu needs to take notes and learn from a pro, somebody who's a veteran at this game, you know, who's been doing this for well over two damn decades. You know what I mean? Like, this is somebody who you need to be looking up to. You know, you're trying to be in her field. So take notes because class is in session. Um, And it was cool that Jackie reunited with Robert and stuff. They were happy to see each other. It would be crazy if Jackie and Robert picked up where they left off back in the day. That would be crazy mm, to see the two of them together. I would, I wouldn't mind it, even though we know that um, Holly's not really dead. But I wouldn't mind it. You know, him and Holly been broken up even for a minute long before thought to be dead. So <laughs> I wouldn't mind this at all. Um. So anyway, 
moving on from that, Anna and Finn are continuing to plan this damn wedding. Listen, they've been planning this wedding and they've been engaged so long. Emma has children now. Patrick and Robin are now grandparents. That's how long they've been engaged and that's how long they've been planning. That's how long they've been playing this damn wedding and they've been engaged. Like, come on now. The babies got babies now. The babies' babies got babies now. Like, ugh, hurry up with this wedding. Like, damn, I'm going to be old and gray by the time y'all get married and y'all going to be half dead. <laughs> Plan the damn wedding already. What are you waiting for? Now they sit there talking about because they were supposed to have this little quaint wedding with just a few guests. And that turned into 250 people. First of all, how y'all know 250 people? Like, it just sounds like to me, y'all just inviting Tom, Dick, and Harry and whoever. Anna sitting there talking about, oh, no, we got to invite her because, you know, she saved my life once. Okay, that's once, though. That's not, you know, oh, you got to, you know, invite this person because we kept in touch. So what? Send them a bouquet of flowers or something. Send them some edibles or something. You ain't got to invite them to the wedding. We don't need 250 people. Y'all just need to hurry up, go down to the courthouse, say I do, and throw a party. That's all you need to do. Because all of this planning this wedding is taking too long now. Damn, I'll be a skeleton by the time y'all... <laughs> by the time they get married, hell, I'll be a skeleton. Like, you, you wouldn't see no human form on me. I'm just saying, like, damn, hurry up. Time is of the essence here. Time ain't forever. We ain't going to be on this earth forever. We might not be here tomorrow. Like, I'm just saying, like, get married and call it a day. Like, y'all taking forever, forever. Damn. And here go Anna. She keeps talking about, oh, we got to save room for two extra people. Finn was like, who? Of course, his father and stepmother. Anna, stop pushing your agenda, please. Stop forcing this man to forgive and forget. If he's not ready to forgive, that's on Finn. If he's not ready to move on from this, that's on Finn. He's a grown man. He has his reasons why he don't mess with his father and stepmother. He has his reasons for that. Respect it. You don't have to like it, but you already brought this up to him more than once before. Why keep making this a topic of conversation? If he says, you know, I don't want to talk about it or move on and I'm good, let him be good. Stop bringing this up because now you're just creating unnecessary problems between the two of y'all. Like, because Finn done already snapped on Robert ass today. <laughs> Because when Robert came over to the table, you know, he thanked Anna for helping him see the light that he needed to go, you know, pay his respects and go after Holly, you know, go pay his respects, to, you know, go to Holly's memorial and stuff and put the past in the past and all that mess. So he was like, I want to return the favor to you. You open my eyes. I want to open your eyes about Peter. So, of course, Anna didn't want to hear it. She want, she didn't want to hear nothing Robert had to say about Peter. She's tired of hearing it. So she gets a phone call and she gets up to excuse herself. And now he's basically talking to Finn about it, telling Finn, well, you got to protect your daughter. You got to protect your family. You know, Anna's my family, too. And I want to protect her and this, that and the third. Finn just banged on that table. He just snapped. Like he was like, enough, enough, enough. Because at this point, Finn is tired of hearing it. I mean, I understand that y'all tired of hearing it, but. Robert is speaking complete facts like y'all are blindly allowing Peter to infiltrate your life and he's still up to no good. But I feel like Robert just need to fall back a little bit. Get the proof. Play nice if you have to like use it as an undercover thing. Play nice. Get the truth. You know what I'm saying? Just fall back because you keep bending their ear about this Peter situation. It's going to make them gravitate more to Peter and leave you in the dust. And forget about you because they're going to start thinking that you're just doing this because of an old feud with Faison and you're just trying to pick a fight and be messy. And it's going to make them not want to deal with you anymore. So just play along, you know, play nice. I know it's going to be hard for him to do, but play nice until you get the goods. You know what I'm saying? Then, bam, spring it on them and make them look like the dummies that they look like. That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do. Play the game. Play the long game. Right now, Robert, you 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 flunking right now, bro. You are failing. You you know, like, come on, bro. Just work with Spinelli, work with whoever, get the evidence that you need, get the proof. And then spring it on them. So that way it's irrefutable proof and they ain't got no choice but to hear you and you know, listen to what you're saying. So anyway, um 
I guess Anna got a call from Valentine or whoever about Alex or whatever. Because Anna, she wants this situation neutralized. Like, she wants Alex neutralized. Um, I can't wait for the truth to come out about Peter. It's high time that a lot of people take the rose-colored glasses off and they face reality. So, anyway, moving on from that, Dr. Obrett, um is happy that Dante is on his way back to Port Charles so that way he could help exonerate her but unbeknownst to Dante he doesn't know he's helping Obrecht of course because you know if Dante knew that information he probably would have said hell no <laughs> so of course Dr. Kirk didn't tell him all of that now um, but Dr. Kirk was upset because he thought that he was helping Obrecht just take down Peter but she made it very clear that she wants to basically get revenge on anybody who helped incarcerate her um including Anna Devane and Dr. Kirk was like yeah I can't help you with all that so she basically tried to convince him like yeah you need to help me and you will help me because apparently Dr. Kirk is jonesing for Obrey I said okay so first Victor Cassidy was all up in love with Obrey and now Dr. Kirk I said oh she must got the ill nah nah I'm so ooh. You got these men just swooning over you, old break. I know that's right. Dr. Kirk, he was like, oh, I miss you. I love you. Like, <laughs> Dr. Kirk, oh, my God. He wants to drink from the fountain that is known as Lisa Obrecht. Mm -mm -mm. Lord have mercy. Mm. Tell you, some of these women on this show got the killer punani. Look how they be just having, like, you got Alexis got this man OD and after giving him some, like, mm okay um now dr kurt he all smitten with uh obrecht with lisa and he's willing to do what you know she need him to do talking about oh i'm gonna miss you because i guess he's going to poor charles or whatever to help this situation out with dante because basically she need dr kurt to go and keep an eye on dante in new york because she don't want dante to be left to his own devices um she wants Kirk there to basically guide him. And she's talking about, oh, I'll miss you. Obrecht was playing Dr. Kirk like a damn fiddle. Because clearly she don't want that man. She was just using her womanly ways to get her way. That's all she was doing. Was, you you know, using his affection for her to manipulate him to do her bidding. But now she need to come up for with a plan for after she's exonerated. Because you already know, after she's exonerated, he's going to be expecting some payment. And we already know what that payment is. It's some booty. That's what he's going to be expecting. He's going to be expecting some booty. So she need to come up with some type of plan B to get a out of that. Because obviously she's not feeling Dr. Kirk. So, you know, Obrey, you while you sitting there and he in New York, you need to be, you know, coming up with some new ways to get rid of this man. Because he's going to be chasing after you once, you know, he does your bidding. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. This whole situation with Ned and Olivia is making my head hurt. It was good to see my boo Monica, though. Um, because Olivia came home. You know, she's been home for a hot minute, waiting on Ned, trying to figure out where he at. And Monica was like, she don't know where the hell he at. Um, so Olivia knows that, you know, there's obvious tension in her marriage and there's issues. Ned ass is over there at Alexis's after they done got drunk and hit the sheets. Um... And Alexis basically told him to get his ass over to the house and go talk to his wife because she has no, you know, intention of Olivia finding out that they slept together. And she was pissed at Ned because Alexis was pissed at him because he tried to use that corny, weak ass excuse to um, basically to justify him sleeping with Alexis. Oh, well, she up and left me and started ga uh, gallivanting around the globe with Robert Scorpio. You don't even know what happened between her and Robert. You don't even know the full story. And that's why Alexis said, go your ass home and go get the full story instead of jumping to conclusions about something you don't even know what happened. I said, amen. So after Ned left, <sighs> Alexis got her some vodka and started drinking. I said, Alexis, no, put the vodka down. Put it down, Alexis. Like, I need Alexis to get some help. I think Alexis really needs to hit rock bottom. Because I don't really feel like she fully hit rock bottom. Because, you know, when some people hit rock bottom, 
there's no way, there's nowhere else to go but up once you hit bottom. So I don't think she hit bottom totally yet. After all the shenanigans and stuff that's been going on in her life, you would think that she would have hit rock bottom. It would have made her realize, like, yeah, you need to quit that drinking. But you ain't hit rock bottom yet. That's the problem. And when I say rock bottom, I mean bottom bottom. You need to lose your house, your money. You need to be out on the street corner begging for loose change. That's the type of rock bottom I think she need to hit. You need a real reality check to get you off that liquor. Because you know, it's like every time something bad go on in her life nowadays, she go running straight back to that bottle, sucking on that bottle. Get off that bottle. She worse than a child sucking on a nipple. Get off that bottle and get you into a nice AA. See, that's why she need Finn. Call Finn. Call him. I know he dealing with this planning of this dumbass wedding, but he could take a minute off of that because that wedding obviously ain't going to happen until the year 2059. So he has plenty of time to help you. Call that man because I had enough. Um. So anyway. <laughs> rant over so anyway moving on from that so ned gets his little lion cheating ass home and smelling like a distillery um and olivia was like where have you been like i've been leaving you countless messages and here he go trying to go off on olivia oh you left me oh you went to go be with robert scorpio all over the place yeah your phone was in monte carlo in a room in a suite um, you didn't help me with Brooklyn. First of all, she went there. She went to Geneva to go see her child. Her child comes before your child. Let's just put that clear. Let's make that clear. And she's already helped you with Brooklyn, but there's nothing more she can do to help you. There's nothing more. You just need to fall back and let Brooklyn, you know, get over this anger that she has towards you. Let her, you know, let that calm down on her own. Because if you keep trying to force it, you're not doing nothing but more harm. That's all you're doing. So you might want to pump your brakes and calm your ass down. Um. So anyway, yeah. So he said they're talking about, oh, you slept with Robert. Really, Ned? Did see Alexis told him not to play this weak ass card that he trying to play to justify him screwing Alexis because you're gonna look dumb. Like you, that that tells you what he thinks about his wife's character. You think so little of your wife's character that you think that she would go messing around with Robert Scorpio just because y'all been having issues in y'all marriage. If you knew Olivia well enough, then you would know she ain't no she ain't no whore. She ain't no hoe. She ain't running around sleeping with this one, that one just because she mad at her husband. She's not that type. OK, she's not that type of person. He would know that if he actually trusted his damn wife. I understand y'all marriage been a shaky round for the last couple months. But Ned hasn't really done a whole heck of a lot to fix that shaky marriage. He's been actually doing more harm than damn good in that marriage. Fool. Now you want to sit here and accuse her of messing around, you little idiot. Ugh, he gonna look so stupid when he figure out that obviously she wasn't the cheater your ass was. And you, you already know. When Olivia find out that he was cheating, she gonna go full bits and hurts on his ass. And I can't wait for it because he deserve it. So anyway, moving on from that, we get this little sick ass scene <laughs> between Ava and Ryan. I said, oh, Lord. So Ryan starts telling her about the letter that he got from Nell detailing how Julian knew that Wiley was really Michael and Nell's child and he helped cover it up, all his little misdeeds. And he's willing to send that to Sonny on the condition he'll keep his mouth closed if Ava regularly visits him. Basically, he wants Ava to visit him every week to basically resume what they once had, where she confess all her feelings to him. You know, when he was running around pretending to be Kevin and stuff like that, basically that's what he wants. Or else he's going to seem like a canary to Sonny. So, of course, Ava has to, you know, protect her weaselly ass brother, cowardly ass brother, by agreeing to go along with this. Ava, I know you love Julian. I know you're loyal to him. But Ava, don't do this. Don't don't do this. Listen. I understand. I mean, I feel like you done protected that man long enough. Julian is grown. He need to pay for his sins at this point. So <laughs> cause ain't no way I would sit here and visit some wackadoo ass Ryan Chamberlain every week. There is no way in hell. So Nicholas come bust up in there basically telling Ava, oh, let's go. We're leaving. She was like, who the hell you think you are? She was like, first of all, I'm grown. <laughs> like, come in there. And how he even get into the visiting room? Like, the guards at Pettenville are so fickle. 
So, of course, Ryan was upset because um, he started, he saw the feelings, the genuine feelings between Ava and Nicholas. So, that sent Ryan into a tizzy. He was upset about that shit. Um, you know, Ryan, jealous psycho. This is going to be quite interesting. Um, I did like the scene between Brooklyn and Nicholas and stuff. You know, he was offering her a place to stay and... You know, anything he could do, he a helper, whatever. Um, Julian is just all up in some mess right now. He need, he, he need Ayala Van Zant to come fix his life or something. Because Julian, your life is all messed up. And you need to fix it. Because your world is about to come crumbling down at some point. Um, so anyway, Amy and... Amy look good. Amy Driscoll? Oh, she lost a ton of weight. I mean... I always felt like Amy was beautiful before the weight loss. Like, she looked gorgeous, but wow, she looks even more amazing. Like, she looks amazing. Like, the weight loss definitely uh, suits her. Even with the weight, she looked gorgeous, but wow, that transformation, you know, looks great. Um, Brooklyn is definitely going to use Amy as a patsy because we all know Amy know how to sing. She can blow. And right now, Brooklyn can't sing, and she's still trying to get this career to happen. So basically, I feel like she's going to use Amy to boost her singing career. She's going to have Amy do all the singing, but Brooklyn's going to pretend like it's her voice, like it's her singing. She ain't slick, and I hope, you know, and Amy's a very sweet person, you know. She's a little, you know, too much sometimes, but she's a very sweet girl. And I would hate to see her get used and played. So, you know, if you're going to use her to do all this singing, I hope you're breaking her off a little paycheck or something. You know what I'm saying? Like some residual, some royalty, something. Don't just have, you know, don't use her and, and try to play her. But this is going to be messy. I have a feeling it's going to end in some mess. So anyway, Carly comes over to the quarter main mansion. I hate whenever Carly come over there because I'm like, I just wish Monica would throw her out. <laughs> But Carly comes over to the mansion and stuff to check in on Willow and Michael and to drop in on Wiley and whatnot. And when Michael had to go take a phone call to talk to the surgeon that's doing the uh, surgery on Wiley. Because they told her that Willow was going to adopt um, Wiley. Of course, you know, Carly has some questions and stuff like that. Carly just need to mind her business sometimes. Like, first of all, your son is very grown. Like, stay out of his affairs. Um... But I did kind of did. I, I like that conversation. I did. I like the conversation that they had. And, you know, Willow is fully intending on adopting Wiley. But I think her hiccup was the fact that her and Michael were not in a real marriage. I think that's kind of the hiccup for her adopting Wiley was because the marriage ain't really for real, you know. But I feel like eventually it will become real for them. I think it definitely will. They definitely going to, you know, start being a real live couple, start falling in love because it's clearly happening. Hell, even Sasha could see that it's happening. Um, and I'm kind of here for it. You know, I'm here for it. So anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see y'all all later. Hope you have a great day. Peace.